Okay, so I'll show you two examples of that. I used to go to a lot of foundries. So that's where you melt metal and then pour it into a mold, okay? And you can see the big one, the animation thing. It takes a few minutes to pour it. You're making huge, huge casting which goes into marine engine or something like that. And then realize that this is a very important industry. It has all the sectors as you can see. And I also found that and I thought that can I not bring technology into the whole thing in the sense that can I control, visualize and control the entire thing on my laptop. The real foundries are very messy places. Dirty, difficult, dangerous. We say 3D. Dirty, difficult, dangerous. Okay. I said, can we make it smart and sustainable? Okay. So this was a dream that I had at one point of time. And I said, I articulated the thing. It's very easy, very important to write it down properly. I called up, called people all over the country, literally Trivandrum to Manipur to Jodhpur to, you know, whatever, different places of the country. People I knew, faculty, different organizations. And I told them that, can we think about creating a system, a small tabletop foundry, smart foundry, with which a 25 year old with a 25 lakh budget in a 25 square meter space can start his own business, his or her own business. My fortune that all of them agreed. And then uh, within a year we had this whole, this was a basic idea of putting software and hardware and sensors and analytics and the cloud and everything together, making a smart one. And uh, more recently we have put the whole system together. So there is a 3D CAD modeling software, simulation software, we have hooked up a 3D printer, there's a new 3D printer now, and then we hooked up, made a tabletop melting and pouring system, and then you couple it with a uh, sand declamation and things like that. So now the whole thing is now working in pieces, not integrated yet, they are integrating as you speak, okay? And we have exhibited in many places already. And uh, the dream is to have a dashboard, which can you can see on a tablet or maybe whatever, <clears throat> where you can visualize and um, analyze and maybe even control the whole system. So, so domain number two, which is medical, okay? So 2004, um, early March or April, I attended my, I saw a surgery, that's the surgery where I was there. And I saw, what I saw was uh, really, really, you can say both traumatizing as well as, uh, as um, <clears throat> disturbing in some sense. Uh, because it was surgery of a, of a kid, it was about 12, 13 year old kid, boy, who had a bone cancer. And uh, the doctor had to, instead of amputating the leg, because he's still a child, uh, the doctor had opened the leg, removed the entire knee joint along with part of the femur bone and tibia bone, and replaced that with a mechanical joint, big mechanical joint, it's called mega prosthesis. Okay. And that was the first and the most advanced joint ever in the world, first time surgery done in the country. I had met the doctor in some, some conference. So he, he said, come and meet me, and then I, I so went and saw that. 2004, I saw the, surgery, uh, saw the surgery. 2007, we started the project with some funding from Government of India. And just one month back, we had the first surgery done. Second surgery done also within a few days after that. Such a complex project, perhaps India's most complex medical project, you can say device project, because we did the device, we did the surgical instrument, we did the software, testing machines to walk the joint for <clears throat> lakhs and lakhs of cycles so that the real joint will not fail. One crore cycles of walking we did on that. All this took about 10, 12 years. After that, subsequently, me and my students attended maybe dozens, maybe hundreds of surgeries of different kinds. Neurosurgery, cardiac surgery, laparoscopic surgery, of course, orthopedic surgeries. Okay, babies, adults, old people, all kinds of things we have seen now. But this particular knee joint, I told you the advanced one imported from the, from the USA. At that point, it was costing 5 lakh rupees. They say subsidized cost is 5 lakh rupees for India, special price. But 5 lakh is still beyond the reach of many people. Because 5 lakh is just the cost of the implant. And it's for cancer people, bone cancer people. So you're talking about the cancer treatment, chemotherapy, radio, radio, whatever it is. Then the actual surgery cost, your rehabilitation cost, your hospitalization cost, travel cost, just not possible. What we did brought down the cost to under 1 lakh or just about 1 lakh. And now after doing a lot of projects, I can say that if you do a project in India the right way, okay, and I'll talk about right way shortly, it is possible to bring down the cost to one-fifth easily. Typically when you do something in India, not copying a product, please, I'm not copying talking about that. You are re-engineering and reinventing the whole thing. Then you can bring the cost down to one-fifth typically. But if you think about it carefully, and look at the cost to patient, not cost of device, 
cost to patient for that particular job done, diagnosis or treatment, whatever it is, it is possible to bring the cost down to one hundredth, one percent of what it costs overseas. Why we need to do that? Because there are 14,000 different health problems of all kinds and we need medical devices which are you know for all kinds of things screening diagnosis whatever whatever and that one person is very clear to you now the per capita expenditure on healthcare in USA is $7,500 the per capita expenditure in the country is $70 it is less than 1% of USA what it means that even if you take a device made in USA for that country and give it 90% discount it is still 10 times more expensive than the average expenditure head of the country so there's no way you can that's the reason why there's a lot of the Trump will keep on calling us and saying please open the door for our medical devices but what is the use of that it is unaffordable to our population